Hey guys, in this video I wanted to show you how to use our Picture Frames mock-up pack. So here we have the PSD Photoshop file and the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is simply enable or disable the frames. So come over here to the layers panel and click this little arrow to drop down all the frames and you'll see that there's 32 inside. Now if you look to the left of these layer groups you'll see they're all turned off except for one and that's the one that we can see here. So if you want to check out the other ones, simply turn off this other frame and toggle the rest on to see what they all look like. There's also PNG files in this pack, so you can easily open those and scroll through everything to see what the frames look like. That way you don't have to toggle them all on and off in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And then I'm going to maximize the backgrounds layer group. And in here you'll see 20 textures as well as a solid color fill layer at the bottom and a color overlay at the top. So right now we have this texture active and it's just the white wood background. So if I turn that off, you'll see our solid color here. And if I scroll down and double click that image thumbnail, it pops up the color picker so I can change the background color. Or you can come down and turn these textures on and off to choose one of the textures instead. Next, I'm going to show you how to insert your own artwork. So I'll minimize the backgrounds and open up the frames again. And then I'll scroll down to the frame that's in use and click this arrow to open that up. Now inside you'll see a few layers. And if you come down here, you'll see put your art in here. And then there's this little artwork placeholder. So if I click on that, then I can come open my artwork and simply click and drag it into Photoshop and then scale it down until it fits my frame. Now, if you want to change the matte color, you can come over and double click the image thumbnail for the matte layer. And again, that opens up the color picker where you can change the color of the matte. If you want to change the color of the actual frame, come up here to this layer called frame color. You can see that it's disabled by default, but if you turn it on, then you can come up to the properties panel and you'll notice that this is simply a hue saturation adjustment layer. So all I have to do is drag this slider to change the color of my frame, and then I can adjust the saturation and the lightness. You'll also notice that each frame has its own shadows and things like that. So if I come down to my frame layer and expand the layer styles, you can see the effects that are used. So if I double click this layer, it'll pop open the layer style dialog. You'll see that it has bevel and emboss, gradient overlay, and drop shadow enabled. So you can come in here and do things like change the angle of the shadows, and you'll notice as I rotate that, the shadows in the image change. You can also come in and increase the gradient to make the lighting effect on the frame a little bit stronger or weaker. Lastly, under bevel and emboss, you can increase the size of that to make the frame look thicker or thinner or increase and decrease the highlights for a more dramatic effect. The last thing that I want to show you is how to get this frame into another document so we can work with it. So first I'm going to minimize that frame layer group for the frame that we have and I'm going to open up the backgrounds again. So you'll notice that I already have my frame layer selected in my layers panel. If I scroll down to the texture that we're using and hold control and click that now I have both of those selected. Then you can just right click and choose duplicate layers. And when it asks you for the destination, you can either choose a document that you have open or click new to copy it all to a new document. Then just hit OK. So here's our new document and you'll notice that the only things in here are our frame and our background. So the best thing to do if you want to shrink this frame and rotate it and move it around is to simply choose that frame layer group, right click and select convert to smart object. Now you can scale and move this around and it won't lose any quality. If you need to go back in and edit the frame, you can simply double click the thumbnail for that smart object in the layers panel and it will pop open in a new window, complete with all the original layers intact. So you can come in and change the frame color and things like that, and when you're done, close that and hit save. You'll notice it automatically updates in your document. 
And that's pretty much it. I hope you see how flexible this kit can be. It has 32 frames and 20 different backgrounds, so the combinations are really endless, especially when you take into account all the customization that you can do. The last thing that I want to show you is the special effects layer group. I'm going to minimize everything else and open up the special effects layer group. The only thing that's enabled by default is the vignette, and you can see if I toggle that on and off, how it changes the look. You'll also see a couple color tone layers and a vintage curve layer. So if I turn the color tone layers on, you can see how it changes the look of the image. And if I select one, you can see that they're only set to 15% opacity. So if you want to make that effect more intense, you can change the opacity. If I turn on the vintage curve layer, you can see how it kind of gives it a vintage effect. And if I select that, you can see that what it's doing is brightening the dark areas and darkening the bright areas. I hope you guys can put this to good use, and if you create something using this pack, please email it to me so I can check out what you made. I'm John Shaver for Design Panoply. Thanks for watching.